of where it came from. Where it came from is when I was a little kid, one time I was in the, I went into the bathroom and you know how little kids play with matches, right? Just to, as a right. thing like experiment. So I went to the bathroom and I was, I was like playing a lot of the matches stuff. And I opened the door and who's standing there but my mother and she smells the matches in the bathroom. And she says, what are you doing in here? I said, oh, I was just, I was just playing. She goes, well, what are you playing with? And I was like, I just, you know, was trying a lot of these matches. And she said, you are going to burn the damn house down. And what it made me think of when Romney came out was he's acting like he's just playing around and having a good time, but he's threatening burning the country down wow. with these statements. And that's why I said he's burning, he's playing with matches in the bathroom. He thinks he's just playing around, but he's risking the entire nation yeah you know what's what he's doing you know what's so after you read that tweet i haven't heard a thing from yeah you know what's so funny that when he when when i heard it when i saw the clip online and uh i i, I just thought i didn't know it was you and then i just thought gee that that tweet can mean a lot of things and uh i just laughed because it was i just laughed because i loved the, i love looking at the look in his face because he he didn't know how to take it either <laughs> so he was confused just like yeah. i was but i just thought he i thought it was funny um, so I was laughing, but uh, yeah, not- I was, uh, you know, and it was on. I think uh, they did it on uh, Fox and Friends the next morning. Uh, <clears throat> I know that Sean Hannity did it right. on his radio show. A friend of mine in California did it on our TV show. You know, it was just and yeah. I just like you know, it was just a little throwaway. You know, I was just angry right. at Mitt Romney. So this little throwaway tweet. I wasn't trying to compose some great moment, you know. But it's right. for some reason it took off. Right. Know? I'm uh, again. Uh, you listen to the sound of majority here. The, uh, the calls. I'm going to get to you. I'm going to get to all the callers. Don't worry. We're going. We, we're extending the hour here, so I'm going to get to you. Just be patient. Uh, the call boards are lit up, and I want to thank everybody for calling in. Uh, I just got to do. I get just got to do a little reset here. You're listening to the sound of majority on uh, <laughs> New Media Patriot Radio. And uh, on the Rebooting Liberty Hotline, I have uh, Bill Mitchell. Uh, I have, uh, again, I'm flying blind here. I have no call screener. So I have an anonymous phone call um, from Twitter. It says from Twitter. I don't know what that means. Uh, how you doing? Welcome to the show. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hello? 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 Hmm, no answer. Okay, uh, I have another call here. Uh, 651 Area Code. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hello? Hi, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, oh my gosh. Uh, my name is Stephanie. I'm in Minnesota right now. Okay. Um, hi, Stephanie. And I, hi, how are you guys? Good. Good. Uh, <laughs> um, I follow you guys on Twitter, and um, I tried to put this in a tweet, but... Obviously, couldn't fit it all, and just wanted to call in real quick. Um, well, well, you know, Steph. You know, Steph. The reason why I came up with this show because uh, I became frustrated with, with uh, trying to express myself with 140 characters. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not as talented as Bill <laughs> Mitchell. I'm not as. I'm not as talented as Bill Mitchell. But but go ahead, Steph. So I want everyone to think about this. Trump um, announced his candidacy on June 16th. Cruz mm-hmm. announced his on March 23rd. Rubio on April 13th. When Trump announced his candidacy, he brought up huge, huge conversations of immigration, the trade deals. Um, It's amazing how much he has brought out into the open. Um, And, you know, with those two, two months and three months before, they said nothing. And if Trump didn't come out and expose all of this stuff, we would still not know any of this. Mm -hmm. And I just I really want people to think about that when they're voting, because if Trump didn't run, Cruz and Rubio would still be sitting there right. and still be having their mouths shut. Right. And they wouldn't have said any of this. Right, Steph. And it's really scary. Yes. It's really scary how they just don't talk about it and didn't know about it. Yeah, Steph, uh, I and, mentioned, you know, you know something just occurred to me. Go ahead, Bill. Something just occurred to me what she said that I just realized about Ted Cruz. Uh, Ted Cruz is not a leader, a political leader. He's a political scavenger. Okay. And he doesn't, he doesn't lead on issues. He waits until Trump leads on an issue and he meets it once it becomes popular. Well, that was evident. That, like that, if Ted Cruz, th- that was evident during the last debate. Everybody sounded like Trump up on the stage when it came to trade. Here's, here's what Ted Cruz is like. If Ted Cruz we're was in a Fox we're literally not during a war, about any- okay. Yeah, if Ted Cruz was in a foxhole during a war, he would wait for all of his buddies to go over the top of the foxhole and take all the incoming fire 
And then once the machine gun settled down, he would jump out of the foxhole and wave the flag. Yeah. And, and, uh, you know, that's what, that's what he is. He's not, he's not brave. He's not a leader. He waits until something becomes popular. And then he says, he me too it and says, oh, this was my idea. Yeah, I'm going to get to Stephanie. He's I'm a gonna, political scavenger. Yeah, Stephanie, I'm going to get back to you in a second. I just muted you for a brief second. I was I was getting a little feedback there. I'm going to get right back to you in a second. I just wanted to make the statement that uh, I mentioned this in my opening, Steph, that uh, the reason why I was so disgusted with the Republican Party, um, you know, blaming Trump for what happened in Chicago was simply that they they don't either they don't either they're too dumb to realize that this would have happened to whoever was leading at the time whoever they saw as a threat at the time it could have been you know if, if Trump wasn't in this race I always say this Ted Cruz we'd be talking about how Ted Cruz is going to beat Jeb Bush if if, if Trump wasn't in this in, in this in this process so for Ted Cruz and and the, and the rest of the GOP you know uh, to, to come out and hammer. Uh, Donald Trump and blame this on him when this is again this is this is a thing that's been going on for years now this this is well funded by George Soros to blame it on him is ridiculous how did you feel uh Stephanie um after you you know when when you when you heard you know Ted Cruz and Rubio and Kasich you know com- coming out uh, against uh, Donald Trump well i mean that that was just heartbreaking honestly mm-hmm. because they had a chance to really kind of unite the party and like stand by him Mm -hmm. and they didn't and they're just more stabbing him in the back than anything else i thought it was disgusting actually uh uh, steph steph i want to thank you for calling Uh, we have a lot of calls on the board here um but uh, don't be a stranger and follow us follow us on spreaker okay i will thanks so much thank you steph thank you Steph. okay bye-bye so, so there you have it. It's, I mean, it's just, it's just so frustrating. That's why I was so angry the other day when I saw Ted Cruz actually come out. I blasted him on Twitter. I mean, I was just like so fed up. I was like, how can you do that? You know, how can you come out and defend, defend a protest where you had the terrorists? Um, what's his face? Um, what's his damn name? Uh, Obama's pal there. Uh, you had uh, Bill, Bill, Bill Ayers at the, at the, uh, at the rally there. How can you how can you support that? They should have they they should have condemned that, and then worry about you know Trump's rhetoric and, you know later on. But you should they should, they all should have came out and united just like Stephanie said. What do you what do you think about that, Bill? Uh, you know Ted Cruz is uh, he's proven all along that he uh, uh, his core is not the truth. His core is opportunism. Mm-hmm. You know Ted Cruz looked right in the camera and said. Donald Trump will do away with the Second Amendment. Mm-hmm. Ted Cruz looked right in the camera and said, Donald Trump supports Obamacare. Mm-hmm. You know, I saw an ad the other day, and I believe it said that in North Carolina here that it was a Cruz ad, and I believe it said that Donald Trump uh, wants uh, to give your jobs away to illegal aliens. I mm-hmm. mean, you know, he says stuff that is so patently, ridiculously false, and looks right in the camera and says it. And this you is know, the guy. And this is, is this is manipulating. He's an opposite. This is why he's losing with the evangelicals. I mean, they, they don't want to see right. somebody who's going to, they don't want to see somebody who's constantly preaching the word and then lying. I mean, that's, that's just the devil in disguise to me. And that's why he's I'm losing. I'm an evangelical. Right. I'm a born again Christian and he gets the hell out of me. Right. You know, I mean, nothing. He's the guy's Elmer Gantry all the way. Yeah. We got a, I mean, I don't. Yeah, I know. I, it's it's just frustrating to me, and that's why he's that's why he, he he's losing. You know, he's losing the evangelical votes. I mean, you can't you can't prop yourself as this religious guy and then lie constantly lie like that, especially the immigration part. I mean, uh, during the debates, while having Marco Rubio on that stage, the the co writer of the Gang of Eight, he says that uh, Donald Trump was to blame because he he donated to a couple like uh, four of the uh, of the of the gentlemen that were that were part of the Gang of Eight. That it's his fault that the Gang of Eight, uh, you know. Uh, well, it didn't go through, but that he was responsible for, for, for it passing the Senate. And I'm saying to myself, hold on a second. I go, you have the co-writer of the Gang of Eight right there. Why aren't you hamming, hammering him? And let's not get into this Gang of, gang of Eight debate because, as you well know, um, his amendments, Ted, Ted Cruz's amendments was basically – it was not a poison pill. It was, it, was, it was placed there in case the bill passed so he can go back to his open border donors and say, hey, this is what I did for you. Check it out. And then at the same time, if it did pass, he can present it as 
as, hey, I tried to I tried to present a poison pill uh, and it didn't work. So he can go back to his his voters, his vote, his base and say, well, I tried my best. You know, I, I presented the poison pill. So he's he's always he's always uh, he's, he's always got this Harvard spin to everything he does. And that's the way he defends defends himself. And, and it's kind of annoying to me, to be honest with you. Yeah, he's well. He's a good talker. I mean, I, I'll give that to him. Right. You know, he's a great talker, he's, and that's because if if all you had done, if you're a reasonably intelligent person, and all you've done your entire life is talk, you're going to be a good talker. Right. You know, I mean, Ted Cruz is not a stupid man, right. but he's not. Um, you know, he's not a doer, right. and this is one of the things that I think really differentiates Donald Trump from Rubio and Cruz. He's a doer. Together, He's a doer. Well, together, Rubio and Cruz have got 10 years in the Senate. That's the equivalent of two and a half or two plus terms in the White House. And you could literally write both of their accomplishments together on a cocktail napkin without turning it over. Yeah. I mean, and so they're saying these guys, these guys are like the baseball player that says, send me up to the majors because I can't hit minors pitching. Right. Right. Okay. It doesn't make any sense to promote a guy who can't do a relatively easy job to one of the hardest jobs on the planet. Yeah, I'm getting. Uh, I'm getting. You know, it. It's just. I mean, go ahead. I, I have a couple of calls here. Uh, I don't mean to cut you off. Sure. And, I'm, and I'm getting a few tweets. No, from, that's all right. I'm I, getting. I'm getting a bunch of tweets from people that I have to increase the volume on the calls. So I'm presently doing that now. I want to uh, welcome everybody to the Salem Majority here on New Media Patriot Radio. The number. The number to call is three four seven, uh, three three. Eight one seven seven five, become part of the process here, and uh, I want to welcome in right now uh, area code four o four. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hello, area code four o four. What's your name? Where are you calling from? All right, uh, let's try this one. Uh, at, it's it's an anonymous number here. Uh, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hello. 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 Nope. No call. Anyway, Bill. You know, let's let's continue on with. Um, let's go on to uh, what I want to talk about today. Oh, about the the the, the Jake Tapper interview. Um, did Did you hear that this morning? Yeah. Um, I did not hear it, but I read a transcript of it. Yeah. Right. So basically, but the one with Trump. You mean? Yeah, the one with Trump. Yeah. Yeah, the one with Trump, basically, where you have you had Jake Tapper, who is 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 playing the uh, mightier mightier than out thou, and he's basically telling Trump that uh, that he's going to get people hurt if he doesn't take down the temperature. Here you have an an anchor man who works for the biggest advocate of violence, uh, you know, uh, in CNN, because anytime there's 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 anything any kind of unrest. They will spin it to no end um, to make it, uh, you know, make it anti-cop. Um, and they want Donald Trump to turn the temperature down on on, uh, on his rhetoric, quote unquote rhetoric. It, it's it was it was absurd when you're you're again, you, you work for the biggest liberal media outlet out there and you're telling Trump to turn down the temperature. Um, it's just frustrated me to no yeah. end. They just don't like. They just don't like strong Republicans. You know, they're used to show, they're used to admit Romney Republicans that knuckle under over everything. Right. You know, and they they can't deal with a strong Republican that fights back. Right. And uh, we fight back. You know, we're tough, and and we're not going to put up with it anymore. Mm. And as far as you know, dialing down the temperature, does he really think that these crazed leftists will be nice to us if we're just nice back to them? That's what. Do you think the terrorists will be nice to us because we're nice to them? Mm -hmm. You know, terrorists hate us. They want to. The only way they want to see us is dead. Okay, and the only way these crazed leftists and these anarchists want to see Republicans is silenced and gone. Right. Okay, just being nice to them doesn't mean they'll play nice back. It just means they'll see it as a sign of weakness. Well, that's what happened. That's so, what, that's what yeah, ha- this whole that's what happened during the John Kerry. I mean, every time every time the Republicans go squishy, they lose. They lose. They lose. And that's why you know what we call it. You know what we call that in online parlance. We call that concern trolling. Yeah. Okay, concern trolling. In case people aren't familiar with that term, is where your enemy starts giving you advice on how to save yourself. 
you know, Jake Tapper, is, Jake Tapper is the enemy of Donald Trump. Let's not, let's not make a, a joke about that. Okay. Let's not uh, have any question about it. He's the enemy of Donald Trump. So when he starts giving Donald Trump advice on how to save himself, okay, that's called concern trolling. What he's really trying to do is tell Donald Trump how to destroy himself. Right. Because why in the world would Jake Tapper want Donald Trump to save himself? He doesn't. He wants Donald Trump to lose. Right. So if he gives Donald Trump advice,